Hello Flosstube, it's me again, Jen from Jen Stitching Niche. I'm back. It's been a while since my last video. I think it was about two weeks ago. I did do a video last week, but um, I messed up somehow and couldn't get it to upload. So I just decided it would be easier to start fresh with um, this week. So today is Tuesday, June 20th, the first day of summer. And um, it's in the afternoon. I just got home from work. Um, I teach at the university and I'm teaching two summer classes. I'm teaching genetics, which those of you who've had genetics understand how difficult that class is. And they're, these students are signed up for a four week genetics class. So it's crazy, but I got a lot of good students in that class. And then I'm also teaching an anatomy and physiology one class. And I just, I'm really having fun with that one. That's a good group of students. Um, so, um, that's kind of what I do half the day, and then I come home and get ready for the next day. Catching up, I haven't taught genetics since 19, excuse me, 2006. So, um, but my background's in genetics, so I should be able to teach that. That's no, not a big deal. But um, today's video, my plan is to start my whip parade. So I saw um, Andrea, Andrea from um, Colorado did a whip parade and I'm like that's a really good idea and I know I've been talking about all of my whips so I figured I, it would be a good time to kind of go through them and I have three baskets so this is basket one um, I watched um, Trisha at uh, what is it three out threads do hers yesterday and I was like okay she's got almost as many as me I don't feel bad but I still have a little bit more that's okay though um, so my plan is to show you maybe one basket we'll see how long that takes if it takes you know, if I get through this basket and I haven't gone over 40 minutes, maybe I'll go on to the second basket. If not, we'll do to be continued and do several uh, videos of my whip parade. Um, I do have a finish. I actually finished two projects, but I mailed one to a friend. There are four of us that are um, doing uh, exchanges. So it's my friend Sue, Kathy, Teresa, and me. And we've done this before we've done pin um, pin keeps and we've done different little projects and we've, um, Sue convinced us to do a sampler exchange so I mailed a sampler to Kathy last week and she received it and I didn't post I didn't take a picture so I'm sorry but it's a thermative thermative a thread works primitive I'm making up words thread works primitive thread works primitive um one blackbird pattern that I got last year at the um, primitive, primitive Stitchers retreat that was held in Marietta, Georgia. I didn't go to the retreat. I just went to the market. I was at a conference in Georgia um, the same weekend, and I was actually able to go to their um, market, the little vendors, during that Saturday of their retreat. So, But I do have another finish I posted on Stitch Mania, and this is the Stacy Nash um, Halloween Jack sewing roll. So it's just stitched in 310 DMC black on a piece of 32 count raw linen that I then coffee dyed. I was so excited that my husband had left coffee in the coffee pot, which is very rare. And so I was able to dye that. I just soaked it in the coffee, poured the coffee grounds on top. And it's pretty consistent. Um, they're not, not blotchy at all, but I put it out on the patio on Sunday to air dry because I was listening to McKenna, and that's why she did it. She's in um, Arizona, though, and I'm in South Mississippi during tropical season, so uh, you know, tropical storm season. And so, sure enough, I left the house, and within 15 minutes, a storm blew up and blew my little sampler out into the yard. My friend Tracy said, "That's okay; it gets a little more grungy." And I rinsed it off, and it looks fine. I'm going to finish it as the sewing roll, so I just need to, that's why this is so close. I don't need, I just needed enough for a quarter inch to do the sewing. So I'm going to finish that as described in the instructions. So I'm going to do like everybody else. I'm going to pass, this, pass the stash. So if you're interested in this pattern, just comment below and I'll do a drawing and send it to whom, whoever's name gets drawn. So that was the finish for last week. And like I said, I try to do two finishes each month, so I've hit, I've hit two finishes this month. So, um, I try to work on several whips during the week. So I do a three-day focus, 
Um, every three days I switch to a different project and then I do at least one, you know, whip of the day. Stole that idea from um, Katie the Stash Queen. And so I also liked organizing things. So I have a notebook that I just keep up with everything. So my sister got this notebook or this planner as part of one of the, pres uh, not prescription, oh, my brain, subscription boxes from Michael's. And so I, she just gave it to me and I just write down what I'm going to be working on each day. And then you can see the arrows. That's just the three day focus. And these numbers represent the numbers on each envelope. I just do a random number generator for the whip of the day. And then I have all of my patterns in these little envelopes. I got this idea from Jesse Marie from Jesse Marie Does Stuff. And I ordered these from um, Amazon in packs of five as add-ons. So it worked. And then I have the name. I have everything organized alphabetically and then a number associated with each. So I just go in and pull whatever number. So nerd, nerd, nerd. I like to, you know, organize and keep things in my mind. I think it's well, are well organized. But So we'll start with my whip parade. So my first one, I found this after watching Floss Tube. I really honestly... This time last year, or maybe March of last year, I had no idea what Clouds Factory or Satsuma Street or any of that was. I knew Frosted Pumpkin, but I didn't know about Satsuma Street. Um, and I saw this, someone was stitching this and I ordered it. And I'm going to do them all as one piece. This is the 12 Days of Christmas. And I love this one. It reminds me of the um, It's a Small World at Disney World. And so I'm stitching this on a piece of 40 count blush. And that's my progress. And this is a silk weaver fabric. It's just 40 count. I'm doing it with the DMC 1 over 2. And I think it's going to be really pretty. I like that pink. I think it's a good background for this particular pattern. Um, I don't know all of my fabrics. I don't keep up with all of that. So I'll tell you if I know. If I don't, I'm sorry. But... Um, and I do get obsessed with things. So when I started this 12 Days of Christmas, I also started some other 12 Days of Christmas. So I've got three of them in my rotation, and I'm hoping to start a couple of other ones. And I'll talk about those in just a minute. But I get obsessed on things, and I think that's part of, you know, my personality. I have an obsessive personality, probably why I like cross-stitching and organizing. But, um, I get stuck on something, so... 12 Days of Christmas it is. This is a Stacy Nash. And it's 12 Days of Christmas sewing roll. And you can see that there, it's not the, the traditional 12 days. So it's just different motifs. Now this calls for 30 count weeks dye works putty linen. And then it's just DMC color. So I'm stitching it on the call for linen. This is 30 count putty from weeks dye works. But I substituted some silks from my stash. I just pulled the DMC colors and then just matched what I thought was close. And that's my progress. And I love, love, love that oval wreath. I think it's really pretty. So. And again, I'm just using some different linens. Excuse me, not linens. Different silks from my stash. So I'm using, let's see. Bell Swah Cinnamon Stick for the greenish brown color. This is um, Rusty Amber from Silk and Colors Thread Gatherer. And then Oatmeal Scone from Bell Swah. Most of my overdyed and silks I have stored on these little thread drops. I love these thread drops. And then I just label them. And on this one, you can see it's got a little blue tot because I'm, I'm so, I mean, yeah, I'm crazy with my organization, but I color code so I know which which um, ring they go with. So I've got, you know, red is Gentle Arts and green is Weeks Dye Works. Should have been a librarian probably, but I'm a scientist, so, you know, got to be organized with that too, I guess. Yes, you have to be organized. All right, now my third one is actually stored on its own because of all the parts that go with it. So I have this little, I got this little box for this one project. And this is a Mill Hill kit. Oh no, Mill Hill project. 
It's the 12 days of Christmas. And I, again, it's been my third 12 days of Christmas project. But I just love, love that Jim Shore design. And I don't want them all, you know, I'm like, how am I going to stitch this? So that French hen right there, that is stitched on the Flourish perforated paper. That's the Jim Shore design. And I love the way that looks. And I looked at everything. I'm like, you know, I could stitch each one on its own separate piece. And this, it's a nine by nine piece would be big enough. And the sheets are nine by 12, I think. So I ordered six packs of the perforated paper when I could get it reduced on from the silver needle. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just stitching them. And I started these during the um, 12 days of stitch mess. Oh, I got a rat's nest over here. And my most progress is on the first one, the partridge in a pear tree. Oh, where's a piece of paper? Okay. So I'm beating it as I go. I just think it's pretty. I think that's going to be so pretty. And then I'm just going to get some little square frames and frame them. And I'm going to put them at the top of my, of the wall in my um, living room. So we've got a long hallway that goes through our, kind of our den living room. And I'm just going to put them up over there. So during Christmas, I'm not going to leave them up all year round. But I just have all the beads and I've, I'm slowly getting the, getting the um, buttons. So that's what this mess is here. And like I said, I started these during Stitch Mania. So, you know, there's the calling birds. That's my start on the French hens. There's the start on the two turtle doves. Some days are better than others. There's the fifth day. And the sixth day. That's okay. And then day eight. As you can see, I, I sort of lost steam. There's day nine. Oh, Jennifer, you did lose steam. There's day 10. And then I guess I didn't do 11 and 12. Maybe I did. There's a little bit on one and a little bit on another one. So, but you know, it's fun. Stitching on the perforated paper is not too bad. But this big project, it gets its own little crate. But it is numbered. I'll show you that. So it does have a number three on it. So if I pull day three, that one gets in the rotation. All right, so day four is yet another floss tube. Um, what do you call it? Enablement. So this is Lakeside Needle Crafts under the seesaw. And my bachelor's degree was actually an emphasis in marine biology. So when I heard about this, I was like, oh, that's cute. I'm not interested. You know, I've got too many things. And then I saw him. And I'm like, she or he is too cute. So I got it. And my plan is to stitch this for my niece because she's a baby. And she would love that, right? That's my excuse. Thank goodness for nieces. And this is my progress. So this is a piece of 36 count solo dyed silk weaver i was in their um, fabric of the month club twice once back in 2006 2005 2006 and then once about a year and a half ago um so i have a lot of silk weaver but i think i actually got that piece from my friend Teresa. all right day five is one that i've shown i think every one of my videos this is my pattern i'm ready to be done with Birds of a Feather, Alphabet Sampler. It's pretty. I'm just not feeling it anymore. But I don't think I've had any progress since the last time I showed it. There you go. And this is on, what is it? 32 count Sparrow linen from Birds of a Feather. And I'm just using some over, I mean, limited edition um, Gentle Art. So that's I think this is, was chai tea. When I um, bought out the stock of materials from Teresa when, with a closed door, she had a whole bunch of threads, uh, these limited edition threads that she would purchase from General Arts. And I had lots of them. 
and I put together some thread packs and sold them. And then I just decided that this is what, I, if you've ordered from me, you've seen some of these. Um, this is the last, I'm keeping these, sorry. But um, I just attach one of these to the invoice for people that order from me. A little, a little happy, as my little sister would say. I did have someone buy a bunch of that thread from me. She um, was very thankful of that. Uh, Let's see, next up is a Jeanette Douglas. I think I've shown this one before. Of course, I've done this video so many times. I know I've videotaped myself, but I don't know if I've shown it on a previous video. But this is the Apple Stitches from Jeanette Douglas. And I love, love these patterns. There are several of them that I probably have talked about before. And I could just, I'm just, it, I've stitched Let's see. I have stitched acorn stitches, vintage stitches, pomegranate pear stitches, pineapple stitches on vintage pear, and bee stitches. So I've stitched five of these. And then I have apple stitches, thistle stitches, strawberry stitches, and pumpkin stitches left too. So I have four more that I can, that are in my stash to stitch my stitching stash so if you like if you want to try specialty stitches there's a lot of specialty stitches in this and if you want to try silks if you get the silk pack from her or from your LNS and then usually I've um, when I've done these every time I've used I've get the thread pack which can be expensive but the silks are expensive but I've had enough to stitch it twice and I just either give it away or I used to sell stuff on eBay when I was finished with it. I don't do that anymore. Um, I just sell through Etsy now. Day seven, or not day seven, project seven is Little House Needleworks Autumn Band Sampler. And I love seasonal things as well. And then I'm obsessive. I want to stitch all four of, within a group. So you can see right there, that's the winter sampler, band sampler from Little House. And then this one's got that little, those two little squirrels on it. My husband has this thing about squirrels. He thinks they're funny, I guess. And he is always making jokes. So I always, when I see squirrels, I laugh because it reminds me of my husband and his goofiness. But I stitched on this last night and got from I all the way to Q done while I was watching Floss Tube. So it's pretty colors. And this is just 32 count some natural linen i probably our hobby lobby clearance things all the time and i got um several big huge pieces of linen 32 count linen um and still have some of that left over all right i'm talking fast getting winded 18 minutes all right so Next is another Jeanette Douglas. This was a series that came out last year, I believe. But this was gifted to me. Um, it was actually a um, class piece, I believe. It's Autumn by the Sea. And the person that gave it to me was my friend Teresa, and she gave me all the threads and everything. And I think that's really pretty. And I'm stitching it on a piece of... 40 count silk weaver, but I don't know which one. I don't know the name of it. I got it in one of my fabric of the month. But it's really pretty. I can't wait to get that done. And I'm going to do the other four. So I have a piece big enough to do. I'm at the other three. I have a piece big enough to do all three of them. And it looks like sand to me. Beachy. And I'm, while I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you know, my mind's got something else going on. And I promised to show my great-grandmother's biscuit bowl. And when I videotaped last week, I did have that up here. I'm up th upstairs in my house, and I forgot to bring that up. So if I happen to hear one of my sons out in the hallway, I'll make them go down there and get it and bring it to me. And you'll get to see one of my two boys. All right, next up is... Not Forgotten Farms Bee Sampler. So it's a simple one. We're all into bees over here. 
with our bee farm. Um, we're, we're supposed to um, harvest honey next month, our first harvest, so I'm excited. We have six hives, so we should get a pretty good amount of honey. Those girls have been working hard. And here's my progress. Another 40 count silk weaver that I don't know the name. Sorry. But you notice a lot of the colors are the same. This is the reason I dropped out the second time is I got almost exactly the same colors. This one I was happy with because that's a nice neutral. But most of the time I got pinks and orange every month. Well, when I would get them on time. So I don't want to bad mouth another company. They get bad mouth enough. But you guys, you know, I agree. So. It's beautiful fabric. I love stitching on Silk Weaver. All right, next up is a Kathy Barrick Bee Study. So I was watching the Primitive Stitcher, who's one of my other, I love to watch her. She always has the prettiest little vignettes behind her. And if you haven't watched um, Suzette, you should go and watch the Primitive Stitcher. She has this willow tree that sits behind her in a lot of her videos, and I love that willow tree. I think I've, even, I've commented that more than once on her um, videos, but she's stitching on this one. I saw that on her last video. And this is my progress. It's on another piece of 40 count. This is a piece I cut off of that same silk weaver on the last project, so it's a 40 count silk weaver. And I haven't stitched on this since I went to a retreat back in February um, in Orange Beach, Alabama. And I think that's the last time I've stitched on it. So we're going to another retreat. This is by Katrina, the Cross Stitch Retreats Company. And she's have, hosting another retreat um, at the end of this week. We're leaving on Thursday for that. So I'm excited. I so happy. I'm going to teach my classes and I'm giving one of my colleagues the exams and I'm gone and the students will take their exams the next day and I won't even be there to to witness it. So I'm so excited. All right. So that was some are missing because I have finished some of them and I didn't renumber but um I think I have there's only one less than the number. So this is actually my 11th whip, even though it's listed as number 12. And this is from Amy Brecken, Be Merry. And this isn't like all my other stuff. Most of everything I stitch is primitive, but I love Amy Brecken. She is a sweet person. I went to a retreat at Silver Needle in 2014. Yeah, 2014, and she was the designer there, and she, I got to meet her, and she is such a nice person. This, her design represents her personality. It's just happy. It makes you smile, and I love Santa's coat. So I'm stitching it on the call for linen, which is uh, 30 count Morris Blue from Weeks Dye Works, and that's my progress. I got some of that white. I don't like stitching white, so I try to get it as much done as possible. So spend more time happy stitching color. And I'm just using DMC on these, I think. Okay. Next up is a Nora Corbett. And this one is Berry Collector. The Berry Collector. I think that is so pretty. Those are some bright green colors, but I just love all of those beads. Just so pretty. And I ordered, actually ordered this last year from the Stitch and Frog. That's, she is great. If you order from her, you get your stuff really fast. So I really like that online shop. I have an Etsy store, but I order from other people too. And this is, I think this is a piece of, um, I'm not sure what it is. It's 32 count. That's my progress. And this may be a piece that I got at the retreat in February. I ordered a piece, I mean, I bought a piece of um, Under the Sea Fabrics. And I wonder if this is what it is. I don't remember. 
should have put the piece in the tag in here, but I'm so organized, except when it comes to fabric, apparently. That may be Silk Weaver, though. Okay, sorry. Okay. So see, again, this was number 14, and then 15 I finished, apparently, because it's missing. And then number 16 is the is bird song by samplers not forgotten so this was a market piece in 2015 and i went to market that year to help my friend Teresa, and our other two friends kathy and sue went with us and um everybody just loved this piece and they're like oh we've got to get this piece and i got it and i'm not quite sure why. I'm not sure if I love it that much, but I'm still stitching on it. And this is a piece of 40 count from Weeks Dye Works, but I'm not sure what the color is. But you can tell from the fabric, the way it feels, it's Weeks Dye Works. But that's my progress. Not very far. But fabric is beautiful. And I'm just using the call for Gentle Arts because I've I also purchased the um, the thread pack that they had. They were um, offered with that, so but it was released in 2015. Oh goodness! Doesn't want to go back in the package very well because I've got all the threads in there. Okay. Sorry. I hope this isn't too noisy. I know that. Some of these computer um, microphones pick up noises, some noises more than others. Okay. Next up is a Blackbird design, which is one of my favorite designers. I love primitive stuff, so I think you can tell that by my whip parade so far. But this is Bittersweet September from Blackbird Design. And when I got this, I'm like, oh, that's cute, a little bitty. You know it's a little bitty one because it came in a little tiny package and so that would be easy and then you start stitching on it and it's not a little bitty one it's just packaged to look like that, that way that's my progress this is a piece of probably 32 count yeah 32 count something I don't know from my stash oh my goodness it's taken me longer than I thought but it'll be pretty once it's finished. And I don't know how many of you feel this way. There's a, When you stitch on some of these things, it's like it's slow going, slow going, and then you get to a certain point and it's like, boom, you're done. So I'm hoping that I get to that tipping point soon where everything feels like it goes really fast. That's how this one, I mean, if this, I stitched on this one. And it just, I mean, several sessions. And then Saturday, I stitched almost all of this. And then all the words except for jack o lantern from about here. So all of that, I stitched Saturday. And then I got it Sunday and finished jack o lantern And it was just like, you know, why did this take so much time? It smells like coffee and it's hazelnut coffee, community coffee. It smells good. Sorry. I did wash it after I, it flew off onto the ground, so it didn't, you know, I'm not sniffing dirt. Next up is a Stacy Nash. I have a lot of hers. And this is Blackwater Hollow Sampler. I stitched this for my friend. She and Teresa and I did exchanges, and we're still doing exchanges. We're just not really good at keeping up with them. Um, but I stitched this for about three years ago for her and I'm stitching it for myself now and I love this piece and this is on uh, lakeside linens it looks like it's 32 count and I'm not sure what color it is it might be navy bean maybe I don't know there's my progress love that horse love that cat too and that cauldron so pretty oh.
Next up is another one from Not Forgotten Farm. Um, her aesthetic is very, very primitive. So this is her Blue Bell Schnickel. And I picked this up last year when I went to that Primitive Stitchers Retreat market. I didn't go to the retreat, but I went to the market. And I just love Blue Bell Snickel. I don't know how many of you are fans of The Office, but one of my favorite episodes is when Dwight Schrute got to, to organize the Christmas party and they had Bell Schnickel came to visit. And this is my progress. And it's on 32 count. It's a, I don't know, it's something from my stash. It kind of looks like, feels like a silk weaver, but I'm not sure. I bet it is. I'm almost positive that's a silk weaver. But this is one that I, I want to stitch on it, but when it came up in my rotation, this my father had a stroke back in February, and my mother fell two weeks later and broke her hip. So for most of February, most of March, and most of April, we were taking turns staying with them at night. And you can imagine that there wasn't a lot of... Um, it was stressful. And my older sister, poor thing, she was carried the brunt of that. But we all took turns staying with them at night. And um, I couldn't stitch. And every time it seemed like it was time for Bell Snickle to get stitched on, it was time to go. It was my rotation time. And, you know, wine, wine. There's nothing to, to be done about that. But I wish I could have um, stitched more on that one. So this is the next one, and I love this one. I, I'm, I love Plum Street samplers, but I think this is one of her best. I said this on a different video, but I think if they gave out awards each year that she should have won the equivalent of the Oscar for this design. Those pumpkins are gorgeous, and then the leaves on that tree, is it's just amazing. And then those little scarecrows. So good job, Paulette. And then I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count silk weaver. And that's my progress. But such a pretty design. Okay. We're about two thirds of the way through this basket. Looks like I'm going to probably have to do video per basket. Next up is a series and this is Summer House Stitch Works and I just learned about her last year. She was at that same mark, uh, retreat and I purchased this series. So it's an alphabet series, the Calico Sampler. And um, I know Vanna is stitching this in her own color choices and I'm just doing it the, the way it's charted on the same the call for fabric because I bought the all the patterns and the fabric from the lady, the designer, and this is a piece of thirty count um, weeks dye works, but I'm not sure the color. Maybe straw. Maybe that's straw. But it's cute. That'll be one that will take me a while to do. Okay. Okay, 22. 23 is um a Kathy Barrick. Now I've been stitching on this one for a while and I'm almost finished. I think if I could get another, you know, couple of days I'll finish this. But this makes me think of Michelle Rudy now. Because she's stitching the or she was gonna start the strawberry bird, which came out the same time as this one, but it's Cat and Mouse by Kathy Barrick. But I love these designs where it's just the kind of outline of an animal and it's got a scene in there and it's a little farm scene. So cute. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count. I do a lot on 40 count, don't I? And I've got all of the scene done. Look at the little blue black birds and the little red birds and the horse and the fish down here. Where am I? Right there. Oh, right there. But I'm close to finishing, and I can't wait. This one is so cute. But 
So good. Reminds me of Michelle. And again, I have to say every time I think of Michelle, thank you for the very nice shout out. You were that was very sweet. Um, I love the Farm Girl podcast. If you haven't watched hers, you should. She is hilarious. Um, next is one that I've shown in a previous video. This is from Stacy Nash. And it's the Cherry Hollow Farm Sampler. It was a market release in 2015 as well. And came with everything. And it came as a kit. And that's my progress. I haven't done anything since the last time I've shown it. And I have one of these left in my Etsy store. Okay. 24, 25 is missing. Okay. Something's on this envelope. Something probably, who knows. I have a big Maine Coon cat. Sometimes I come in here and he's sleeping on this. These, it has to be uncomfortable, but he's sleeping on it. So this is the, from the Scarlet House. It's Christmas Hide at Holly House. And look at the little reindeer. That's so cute. And somebody, I just saw, is it Annette's Acre? Annette's Acre, I think that's right. She's stitching on this. She's much farther along than I am, though. That's as far as I've gotten. And I have no idea what this fabric is. It's just a scrap piece that I got from who knows where. I'm sorry. I have no idea what that is. That may, I bet it's another silk weaver, and I think it's hazelnut from, I think that's what that is, from Silk Weaver. 40 count. All right, next up is another Paulette Stewart, another Plum Street, and this is a, this one, I'm going to blame Tracy P, because every time I see it, I think of Tracy P, and I think she's the one that I saw stitching it, but it makes me think of her, so, but Cinnamon Stars, and again, just the stars as the smoke. What a cute idea. I love that. And I haven't gotten very far. This is a piece of 40 count sandpiper from Birds of a Feather. So this is an old fabric. That's I don't think it's available anymore. But they're smart. Look what they do. Or what they did. They print the name on the, on the selvage. That's, that's helpful for people who don't keep up with things. All right. Now the next one is going to take a little bit because it's a series. Yeah. And I've stitched some of these, but not all of these. This is the Country Cottage Needleworks Cottage of the Month series. So I've stitched January, February, March, and April, and then September. Don't know why I skipped all the way to September, but I've stitched that those. And I've finished most of them. You can see them right behind me. Let's see. Yeah, that's one and that's one. I'm going to tilt this. If it makes horrible noise, I'm, I'll apologize. But you can see there's the boxes back there are some of them. And... But then I decided I'm going to start them when I was doing those starts that, you know, start a day. And so here's my progress. This is the May. And here's how far I've gotten on May. And this is just a solo dye from Silk Weaver as well. I have a lot of Silk Weaver. When I say that so many times, I start to realize. But um, again, I was in their uh, Fabric of the Month twice and then... Back in 2006, I entered one of my projects in their competition. They did a little competition, and I won first place, and I got 25 pieces of Silk Weaver fabric. So, I've got a lot of it. This is June with all the ladybugs. So cute. And I've gotten farther with this one. I might take this with me on the retreat this weekend. 
So cute. And Silk Weaver. Another piece of Silk Weaver. And this is all on 32 count. So that they're all the same size. July. Patriotic. And this is stitched on a piece of um, Silk Weaver Cinnabar. And I remember that because I love the name. If you have taken a genetics class, you know that's a eye color in Drosophila. That's why I remember it. But I think it's pretty. And then August. And here's, oops, August. And this is the progress. And this is just a piece of 32 count, maybe flax or, yeah, probably flax. So I've gotten pretty far on that one too. But I'm going to finish them all the same. I've got the styrofoam and everything. And to make the other, there's four, um, what is that, eight more? So... I just I haven't started the last of them. So October, November, and December, I haven't started. Maybe I'll start those in October, November, or December of this year. And that, you know, not very well organized there. All right, so next up is uh, one I've shown before, so you've seen this is the Croaking Toad Manor from Praiseworthy Stitches. This is the pattern. So Praiseworthy Stitches, Croaking Toad Manor. And it's really cute. And I'm stitching this on the Call for fabric. I actually bought the fabric when I bought the chart over at Silver Needle. And this is Mirage Belfast 32 count linen from picture this plus and oh, there's my progress so this is the lower what is that the lower left hand corner i don't know my left or my right but it's on that side there you go it's just the two little girls in the carriage and part of the fence what would that be that would mean the lower left right correct i don't know as much as I can remember, I've always struggled with what's the left and the right. It drives my husband crazy. I always tell him, I'll just give you either cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. I can remember that. Or I'll say, you know, if I'm in the driver's side, that way is across from me, so that would be the right. And this way is the left. But if I'm a passenger, the reverse is that way. It's on the opposite side. Anyway, that makes no sense. I know. I need to quit rambling. Okay. Next up is from Homespun Elegance. And it's one of these delivering. And this is Delivering Autumn. I think that's cute. And I'm just stitching it on a piece of 32 count raw linen. And that's my progress. So, and it'll fit on there. You know, I've measured it and everything's good. You can see that, um, you know, the top of the crow is almost the top of the entire pattern. So I've got a good inch and a half up there. And I'm just going to finish it probably as a long pillow anyway. So it's good. It's all good. Okay, next up is an old out-of-print um, chart from the Primitive Needle, and um, it's the Earth Sampler. So it's just an alphabet with little motifs, and this is more nature, so it's got a little rabbit, a little bird, got a whale, and I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count. I think this is either putty or confederate gray but it's from Wil weeks dye works because you can feel it kind of feels like dirty fabric but it has this kind of feels like it's been in salt water that's i'm about halfway done but i love that 
And I'm just a little interesting thing. So, you know, I've had my Etsy store, which I've mentioned three times, I realized, but um, I order most of my charts from Hoffman. And like I said on the la my last video, if you go to their uh, Hoffman, you can look at what's available. And I actually ordered an old chart that was still available from Primitive Needle. It's a, a little a incomplete sampler. And it's, I'm going to post it. I'm going to try to get the order posted this week before I leave. But, you know, it's surprising. A lot of people don't realize what's still available. Oh, I'm sorry. I look all unkept. Okay. Another Stacy Nash. This one is 4 and 20 Blackbirds Pocket Roll. And again, the pictures of these are hard to see, but it's just an alphabet and a little motif at the bottom. And I'm stitching this actually on a piece of Silk Weaver Even Weave that I got from Silk Weaver. I don't know what the name of it is, but I think it's turning out really pretty. I love this. Every time I look at it, it's like, oh, I want to stitch on that. But I'm just stitching it with some um, of the Gentle Arts uh, limited edition. I would get these packs from the one I would shop at Teresa's store every year. And then you're like, what do you do with them? You just, you know, so I've decided I'm using them. So this is Chimney Sweep. So it's just a kind of gray green. And then Blue Ridge Mountain, another model. This one's more blues and golds. And then this is left over from the Jenny Bean sampler, the Halloween sampler, the Witch's Wart. So, you know, I'm just trying to use up some of this thread that I've hoarded all these years. But I think I, I did really well picking those colors. I think that's so pretty. Don't you agree with me? Isn't that gorgeous? That's absolutely beautiful. So... So now I'm upset. I have to tell you, I get obsessed on things. It's the way my mind works. So I always fold my patterns. I'm um, excuse me, fold my fabric so I can see what I've stitched. I want to see the pretty part. And my friends make fun of me because they're like, oh, you just want everybody to think you've done a lot. Well, no, I just want to see the pretty parts. But then last night I was watching Trisha at um, three owl threads and she said you're supposed to fold it where that's on the inside and it makes sense but then now I'm like torn do I want to see it or do I want to protect it so I'll probably just still fold it so I can see the pretty parts see? And see when I pull it out then I see that isn't it Okay, 36, 37. So I've shown this one. I'll just quickly show this. This is another series. It's the Garden Club series from Blackbird Design. So, you know, I've got several of the charts still that I haven't stitched on. It's supposed to look, you know, there's nine pieces. I'm stitching all on the same fabric because I couldn't, I mean, I'm afraid I would mess up and not have them all come together the same way. And it's a piece of Silk Weaver. This is on 40 count. And this is probably the other half of, let's see, what is it? Oh, look. This is Autumn Blush on 36 count. So it's a pinkish color. And that's how much I've gotten done. So. And I'm just substituting silks again on this one. So working on that square. Now, I have an issue on this, and I've bugged my friend about this, is I don't want to stitch this one with a gardener. It's cute enough, but okay. When I look at things, I you know, like many of us, I, I make it, I mean, it's like you've got to make it familiar. What does it look like? And when I saw that, and I hate to say this because I don't want to be like I'm making fun of it, but it looks like Beaker from the Muppets in a dress. And so I'm like, I don't, I can't stitch that now. Because that's all I'm ever going to see. So I've got to figure something else out. 
I probably will just look through my other Blackbird designs and find something that's similar size and substitute. That's what Teresa told me to do. But then I'm like, but that's not part of the series. But I can't put Beaker in that pattern. I don't know. That's probably what slowed me down. That's the excuse. That's why I haven't finished it. Because, whatever. Alright, so I've got three more in this basket. And I'm right at a 50 minutes. So that's perfect. This one is another Tracy P. responsibility. I saw her talking about this one. And it, she was so funny. I love Tracy P.'s personality. I think she's funny. I think her sarcasm makes me laugh. And when she was talking about this and she's saying something about her dad had a boat and she hopes he doesn't get caught by the Kraken, I laughed out loud. My husband was watching that one with me as well. And he thought this is great. So I had to have it. I ordered it. And I decided I wanted it on this fabric. This is a piece of 36 count murky from Picture This Plus, and I think it's pretty. And then Teresa did a thread conversion for me, and it's just silks. Very similar to what's charted, but instead of the pinks, there's more of, um, I can't remember what we did instead of the pink. Hmm. I don't know, but just a slight variation, so it would show up on the murky fabric. But that one's turning out really pretty. And it stitches up, stitches up pretty quickly. So thank you, Tracy P., for encouraging me to do that, whether you realized it or not. You have your influence is far-reaching in a good way. Okay. 39 is a chart from Halloween, just just cross stitch Halloween and this is from 2014 and um, I have this on the CD so oh, oh no I'm so sorry but this is the ghostly mandala okay it didn't print very well so there's parts missing on that and I'm just stitching this on a piece of 32 count off white of some sort and there's my progress And I'm using a uh, limited edition thread gatherer silken colors. This is Nightcrawler's Dance. And I think that's pretty close to what's called for. That's it all unwound. All right, so I'll tell y'all. Um, y'all are learning all about Jennifer's thinking. This is what I tell my students because I'm really big into how people think. There's a whole area of research about thinking about thinking and I taught about chromosomes today and I use my needlework to explain the difference between organized chromosomes where everything's all curled up and unorganized chromosomes which we call chromatin all unwound and my, I can see that anybody that's done needlework or, or knitting or everything when I say that they're like Gotcha, Dr. Reagan. I know what you're talking about. <coughs> okay. So that, nope, one more. The last one in my first basket of whips is another Nora Corbett. And this one is one of the Bewitching Pixies. And it is Gigi. And somebody was talking about that they don't, they're not feeling this one anymore. They don't want to stitch this one. I'm like, how? I'm at the talking to the television. I'm like, how can you not want to stitch that? She is gorgeous. Look at that blue. And I actually had it in my basket. And you know, you're like, look at it. You need to stitch it. But I'm stitching it on a piece of gingerbread from Picture This Plus 32 count. And that's my progress, which I think is beautiful. I think she is absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm stitching several of these, so you'll see some of the other ones as they come up in my um, whip parade, part two or part three. Um, and I'm stitching them all on that 32 count gingerbread. So, all right, so I'm at 54 minutes, and we went through one basket. And I think that's a good, you know, episode. Um, I, my, nobody came upstairs, so I didn't get to send somebody down for my. Um, 
biscuit bowls. So that will be on the next video. Um, I just want to thank everybody. I've had a lot of, of people leave comments. I've had a lot of thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I've had some couple of thumbs down, but that's okay. That's life. It's whatever. Um, I just deal with students that would give me thumbs down too. So I'm, I'm used to that. Um, I, again, I want to thank uh, Michelle Rudy for the shout out. Thank Kay at um, Kay's Cross Stitch for the shout out. That was very sweet. Uh, lots of nice comments. I get excited when people who I recognize are from watching their floss tube comments. So, you know, Michelle from the Stripe Rose and um, so many other ones have left comments. McKenna, the superstar. Um, Buckeyed Stitcher, who I love. Her personality, I'm like, love that attitude. Well, not attitude, but love her personality. She reminds me a lot of the way I think. Um, just, it's just been exciting to be part of the group. Um, I do want to remind you if you're interested in this pattern to leave your, uh, leave a comment below and I'm only, it's subscribers and you've got to be 18 years old. I'm not going to have to, you know, I don't teach anybody less than 18, so I'm still going to still stick with that with my giveaway. Sorry. Um, also, uh, I'm going to below, I'm going to leave a coupon code for my um, Etsy store. It's good through June. It gives you 15% off a purchase of $5 or more. So I put that on my last one. I'd forgotten to mention it, but I put it on there in the comments and some of you saw that. So thank you. That makes me happy. Um, I'm leaving Thursday for that retreat and hopefully we will have a good time. It's Friday and Saturday, so we'll be back on Sunday. And if everything works according to plan, if I can get this thing posted, um, tomorrow, then hopefully I'll be back next Tuesday, is that right? Next Tuesday for my next um, continuation of the Whip Parade. Um, if you have any questions, leave comments below. And again, thank you for viewing this video.